Um, all right, well, Harry, why don't you take us through what we, we've discussed as the biggest value increases in 2022? And this is relative to last year, right? So players from last year, biggest value increase um, in 2022. Yeah, well, num- number one, very clear, no surprises, Angus Bell, because we think he's the number one overall pick in the competition. Two years ago, he was a 24-point average. Now he's a 61-point average, and he's the best player in the game, in my opinion. So <laughs> I think it's hard to top that. Silesi Ray Arce was my second. He had a 45-point average last year. I think we were calling him as that one of our big smokies that we thought could come through and have a huge year. I think we put it put our name on him. So we'll give us all a pat on the back, and Rev, you can have Nelson's pat on the back. Um, he's, he's huge. So he he went very early um, and, uh, and deserves to, I think. And then the next one I had there was Quinn Tapira as well, who I've talked about. I think he'll be the first centre. He was ranked first overall at 48 average, but I think uh, he'll go higher. 38 average, I think he was, sorry. So he'll go higher than that this year for sure. And the the next couple of players, the next one particularly, um, Harry, he, he may be in your fantasy team, but Rev um, mentioned him pre uh, pre the podcast. Rev, you saw Dalton Papali'i as um, having a huge value increase this year. Yeah, he's had such a benefit from some of the uh, departures from the Blues, but also his ascension to captain. Um, I, I think he really established himself as being able to play seven at an All Blacks level. At the start of the year, I didn't think he could really cut it as an All Black seven, um, but he just got continued game time. And he's someone that I probably thought about as being the ideal number 20 option because he can cover six, seven, eight. He was so good off the bench, high impact. But I think this year with the captain's armband, no Blake Gibson, uh, only really Adrian Chope and Anton Sagner to compete with. He should just be, yeah, skyrocketing up your list of back rowers that you want in your team. Yeah, he's got an absolute mortgage on the jersey this year. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you don't name someone captain and then not play them, do you? Oh, oh, actually, although we, we could have said that for Blake Gibson, wasn't there a while that yeah. Blake Gibson was captain? And <laughs> we're like, mm, not really going to play him. But, um, yeah. but speaking of someone who you didn't think was up to all black calibre, um, but then very clearly showed he was, uh, I've just realised I've got to take this opportunity with a guest on the pod um, to see if your opinion falls more, more in line with Harry Nelson's or mine in terms of... Um, but Sam Kane, yeah, just just the All Blacks captain, but you know, isn't it isn't a particularly worthwhile seven according to Harry and Nelson? He's um, in the top ten sevens in New Zealand, that's for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you feel on on Sam Kane, uh, Red? I, I was split. I think as a player, definitely starting seven for Chiefs, definitely starting seven for uh, All Blacks. You know, given the available options, but. Uh, I don't care about that for the All Blacks. I care about fantasy um, at the moment. So <laughs> Lachlan Boshier is the number one option. It's a shame that he's uh, left for, uh, I guess, greener pastures and um, we get a bit more money in Japan. But yeah, uh, I, I, I'm i halfway in between because Kane is a, a freak player, but mm-hmm. he does not bring home the bacon like old Lockie Boshier did. Would you start him over Artie Sevilla at the All Blacks? Uh, it depends if they go Artie at eight. In, I think in my ideal back row, I'd probably have, um, I mean, it, it's a bit out there, but Akira, Artie, and Satutu. I, I like that sort of combination and just get some really nice damaging runners. I think we um, all agree with you, right? That's why yeah. we put so much on Sam Kane. <laughs> Look, it's uh, like they've got options out the reserve. Like we're not even mentioning Frizzell or um, Jacobson or Blackadder coming through. Like it's, it's disgusting how many options they could choose from. <clears throat> yeah. It is. That's the operative word. Disgusting, really. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, all right. And otherwise, we've had biggest value increases. Brody Retallick simply by virtue of coming back to play. Um, you know, instant first pick in the locks. Obviously, we had some people depart. We had um, Patrick Tupolotto and who who have been. I guess we could just say we've had some locks be put into their proper positions, like Fergus Lee Warner, who was a great mm-hmm. fantasy scoring lock, but is now is a back rower. Um, I feel like there's been a a lock in the past couple of years that has taken off who was an absolute fantasy gun, but I can't think of one today. Fergus Lee was first on a 40-point average, then Luke Hunt, Salah Kailoto, 35, Sam Whitelock, 32, and then it yeah. dropped all the way down to Tua Pilato on 25. So, no, there's no one else there. It's um, mm-hmm. The Fergus Lee want to change to a, a Lucy, I think, is the big big one for sure. Yeah, and we discussed Brady Retallick, but, I mean, look, back 2018, he had a 44.8 average. So, um, you know, huge. Uh, he doesn't have to be that good to still be the top lock. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's it, yeah. Um, and lastly, uh, Harry, I think you already mentioned him, but Lester Fying and Nuku. Oh, sorry, we all, I think we all talked about him. But, um, yeah, we we all see him getting a lot of minutes. It just uh, how that plays out will be constantly on uh, every Crusader fantasy owner's mind.